So let's look at a timer. A uh, timer just plays time until it gets to a target time and then stops. Like that. And then it sends like a timer finished pulse. Then it gets to its kind of destination. And while the um while the current time is the same as the target time, it sends a timer finished signal. Um and that's even when it's on minus, so and it's on the minus uh, countdown it counts down time from the end instead of from the beginning um, even when you do that now probably you don't just want it to start playing immediately you'll probably have some signal to start it playing so let's uh, use that um, so then it doesn't play if it has something wired into the start timer then it won't play until it receives a signal a signal goes from um, non-positive to positive, so if I go like that, then it starts playing, and it will keep playing until it gets to the target time, which in in this case is zero because it starts at the end. But if it counts up, then it will go right up to the target time. You may notice on the countdown that um, if we start it at the end, it starts with the, with it finished, even though it's on the countdown, and then when you start it it doesn't become finished when it gets to zero which you might expect um, but it does um, flicker the timer finished pulse because that is uh, it has like an internal target time it wants to get to and uh, when it gets there then it, it sends this pulse out so uh, let's have a look at the other the other modes so you have speed uh, so if we actually make this value slider have a negative as well and we play time so when it it's while it's sent a positive number uh, if we reset all this actually uh, then it will go at that speed so for every if I set it to here then every one second it will move 0.1 second along this track here this current time track uh, and you can increase that and decrease it and if you set it to zero it won't move at all and if you set it to negative it will move in uh, reverse time so for every one second it will go minus 0 0.4 seconds on the current time and it will stop when it gets to the start or end positional works a bit differently so this is setting uh, what what percentage of the target time you want the current time to be so if I set it to 100%, then it will go to the target time, 1.4 seconds. If I set it to zero, it will go to zero. But it's it's going at, in real time here. So um, if I set the target time to two seconds, and then I want to go to 100% of two seconds, it will take two seconds to get to 100%. And if I set it to 0.5 seconds, um, it will take half that time to get to half that um, half the target time so it'll take one second to get to one second uh, and you can just like change this how you want and you may notice the time of finished pulses when it gets to that target time so if you keep just like moving it and stuff it it still pulses whenever the percentage on here is the same percentage that you're sending it into the um, start timer reset timer so while it's playing if you send it of a positive value then it will reset it uh, if you go negative and you reset it then it goes to the end again but you may notice if you start it and then reset it it kind of flickers to zero so it seems like what's actually happening is the reset still resets it to zero but because the countdown uh, while it's running it kind of likes to go from zero and reset it to the end then it's kind of instantly setting it to the end again it has an output a couple of outputs so as we talked about the timer finished has a timer output so if we plug that into a value slider and we set that to the start then this is the uh, and this is the percentage that the current 
time is of the target time so so you can see like one second is 50 percent of two seconds for example the timer is really useful for interacting with the timeline uh, while the timeline is open and you're holding a wire like this then a special little nub appears which is the playhead position so now if you play time it's it's using this value uh, to set where the playhead is um, and you can do that with other things as well just send it any value between 0 and 1 um, and it will it will go to that position but because the this smoothly changes over time uh, then it, it plays through a playhead as if it was playing normally but you can because of these different modes we can have better control over the playhead so if you put it on speed now we can play the playhead slower and speed it up and slow it down and play it in reverse if you want to um, or or give it a desired position on the playhead to, to get to so now we want to maybe you have like a, a cool door opening um, transformation with a, a whole load of sound effects and uh, keyframes and whatever now we we can just say we want to be have the door open and now we want the door closed and it will play all those animations and tweens in reverse to close the door so you can just animate the the thing just in one uh, one animation instead of two separate ones or whatever something to be aware of is the switch actually sends a value so um, you can see it's sending a 1 while it's on and 0 while it's off and let's just get in closer and you can actually set those values in here so now while it's off it's sending 0.4 uh, and while it's on it's sending 0.6 like that so uh, but if we reset those um, it's very easy to use this to to play to the end or play back to the beginning using a switch so turn on the switch it's sending one so it's getting to a hundred percent turn it off then it's sending zero so it's going to zero percent stuff like that a uh, very common thing is to have a loopable uh, timer that loops when it gets to the end so if I take timer finished and put it into reset timer now it will play through and I'll make this shorter it'll play through when it gets to the end it will reset itself so you can have something happening on a on a repeating timer I'd like to thank Mobius DT, Prism Night 90, Hyper Dream Surfer and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible thanks for watching if you'd like me to continue making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet you can find out how to support me in the link in the description. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.